Good evening, friends. This is I, Rahul Magani, and is a Group Chief Executive Officer, Prashi Consulting, and also a venture capitalist. Now, standing today on 3rd November 2019 at 2:30 in the morning, we are going to be shooting a very important video about something which is happening in the banking sector. Well, apparently speaking, we need to appreciate that India as a country is having very limited knowledge in banking. And I know after this statement, lot of people will give thumbs down on the YouTube, but it doesn't matter. Because the country as a whole, we do not have Goldman Sachs, we do not have JP Morgan, we do not have Standard Chartered, Barclays, HSBC, UBS, Do you know, ANZ, Westpac and all. As a country, we are still relying on the foreign banks and we need to appreciate that. Now, if we predominantly look at that, JP Morgan Chase India is having a good control over the corporate base in India. While if you look at ANZ, they also have a very good control. While DBS, Development Bank of Singapore India also have a very good control. That's a different thing that DB, Deutsche Bank is losing at a very faster pace and I think why losing Deutsche Bank is gone. That is to be honest, that, 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 that is also a very, very realistic fact. But nowadays, in the last 10 days, there is an apparent thing which is happening, which is that the Wall Street is declaring the result. Now, after every second day, another bank is coming into the public domain and giving a result. Like last week, BNP gave the result. Now, Goldman is pending, JP Morgan is pending, and slowly, slowly, everyone will give the results, right? But apparently, when we talk about India, the focus of the India is towards the stock market. Like most of the people tax the banking stock only for the trading or only for the investment purpose. We're going to have a separate video in this regard that how come an idiot, Ranit Gill, giving a statement in the public domain that the Yes Bank will get $3 billion offer. Yes Bank is having $3 billion offer without quoting the name of the investors, right? And stock market went up by several percentage. Anyways, we will discuss that. Now the question is that, if you look at the bank reports very carefully and about the Indian bank reports, you will get a very uh, a kind of feeling which only those people will get, those who have a very good understanding about the banking architecture. It apparently looks like that without quoting the name of any bank that in Indian banks are converting off balance sheet exposure to on balance sheet exposure or vice versa. Because I don't want you to quote the name of the bank, but what I did, this is a research I'm telling you about last three to four months. I downloaded the annual report of a bank of the last five years, which is on their website. I put this in a in a jukta position. Now jukta position means that one, two, three, four, five. I spared some time from my busy schedule. I created a created a Microsoft Excel. In this Excel, when I was looking at the on balance sheet exposure and similar and simultaneously this balance sheet, the annual report was not giving a right uh, the way uh, the off balance sheet exposure should be presented. Now, if you carefully see the annual reports of the bank, there are a lot of interpretation issues which we have, in fact, globally also. Like globally, the categorization of various asset classes of the bank is more or less same. And nowhere it is written that who decides this categorization. So there is an English word which is known as, you know, anonymity. Now we have an anonymity that who decided this, uh, this architecture in derivative. Also, if you look at the annual report of Goldman, JP, City, Standard Chartered, HSBC, ANZ, Westpac, and maybe this is pretty long. The annual report do not give off balance sheet exposure in an appropriate way, the way it should have been given. And more importantly, the biggest issue which we have, not only this annual report give a right picture, uh, don't give a right picture about the off balance sheet exposure, but also it will not give a capital charge on that. So today I wanted to highlight an issue which is that we need to divide, we need to think like we thought few years ago. Now let's take a hold here, let's pause and let's move back several years back. When the derivatives were invented, corporates started taking derivative to protect their cash flows. Eventually what happened, they end up having mark to market. So what used to happen, sometimes mark to market too big, currency volatility, it come in the debit side of PNL or might be credit, depend where you are by yourself. Or sometimes it is small, 
it comes in debit it comes in credit it depends where you are this end up the eps fluctuation which is you know this ends up uh, eps fluctuation this ends up eps fluctuation corporates created eps neutral hedging program i don't know how many of you even know how eps neutral hedging program works so what happened to mitigate the impact of earnings per share isp and fsb well first is i uh, fsb financial accounting standard board decided under us gap to create hedge accounting and in this hedge accounting they decided to take the mark to market from pnl to the oci which is other company has a income which is a integral part of the equity of the balance sheet now this makes a small this makes a big scene in the industry now how it make a big scene in the industry that this will give the original comprehensive income of the company so previously what used to happen before hedge accounting like if you are having an income of 20 crore while you are having derivative exposure of 220 crore so total would be 240 how many investor even understand that but now after that this assuming your hedge accounting turn to this 220 crore will go to the uh, you know oci and company will get to know operationally you are losing now we need to take a pause here i think the time has come when the international regulators like fsb the custodian of us gap and isp the custodian of ifrs they need to think about the mark to market of the off balance sheet exposure along with the capital charge now this would have two implications number one we know that we agree disregard to disregard disrespect gives a thumbs down on the youtube no one can stop the basel 3 that in 2023 all the regulations of the basel 3 will come into picture and when all the regulations of the basel 3 will come into the picture then it would open up plenthora or it would open the flood gates then the all xva cva dva mba kva and all they needs to not only compute it per deal but also to be recorded in the pnl till now we have not saw any statement from fsb as well as from isb that how it will move but eventually we will have that statement in the public domain we need to be rest assured now the moral is these two forums need to think about the mark to market of the off balance sheet exposure and let this mark to market be in the oci provided provided off balance sheet accounting will work till now there is no off balance sheet accounting which is happening you just going to put it at the notes to account and you forget and due to this we have saw the enron when they have did the structuring of their balance sheet like you do the you do the root canal of your teeth this is similar like the structuring of the balance sheet right and i don't think there is there is anything which which we learned from that so i think the time has come when the regulators isp fsb monetary authority of singapore and all the top regulators need to sit together and they need to launch something which is known as the off balance sheet accounting in this off balance sheet accounting not only there should be a standardized format of off balance sheet but also there should be capital charge on that and if it found true then the gain and loss would come in the oci as it would come in the pnl because if we look at the banks annual report very carefully then i am damn sure they are doing the structuring of their balance sheet conversion of on balance sheet to off balance sheet and off to on for a normal investor who is on the road he will just see that bnp paribas declared the eps earning per share of 67 cents versus the projected of 50 cents he would be happy that the earning per share comes good but how many of them have i think one in 1 million have a capacity to look at the bnp paribas annual report and see that they are doing the off to on and on to off well bnp paribas the example we have quoting is only for the sake of example it is it has nothing to do with the actual reality just for the sake of example the similar kind of scene is happening in the india as well so we need to take this very carefully and if we do not take is that then it would be seriously mess of which is going to get happen because five years before no one ever thought that softbank would end up as a crash it is no one ever thought that flipkart snap deal whatsapp flipdal snap deal and all end up as a loss it is no one ever thought that uber lift and all end up as a huge losses it is now today no one is thinking that banks financial institution hedge funds are actually shifting from on balance sheet to off balance sheet and vice versa because they know 
that there is no capital charge which is being computed and it is not coming in the either debit or the credit side of the PNL. To cut the long discussion short, structuring of balance sheet, on balance sheet to off balance sheet and off to own is one of the smartest way by the auditors to basically to mitigate the impact of the huge debt we have in the book. And just think over it. With this, we thank you very much and uh, you know my mobile number which is plus nine one nine eight double nine two four two nine seven eight. You know our fixed income platform www.fixedincome.global. Have a great time. Talk soon.